Hello everyone, I'm Mark Kubrick and this is the Lakewood City Council Candidates Forum. The goal of the forum is to present the views of the candidates for Lakewood City Council in a fair, nonpartisan setting so that you, the voters, can make an informed decision. All candidates whose names will appear on the ballot have been invited to participate in this forum. The League of Women Voters of Jefferson County is sponsoring the forum in cooperation with Lakewood 8. The views expressed here will be those of the candidates, not the views of the Jefferson County League of Women Voters or of Lakewood 8. The Jeffco League of Women Voters has provided all of the questions for the candidates. The League takes no stand in support of or opposition to the candidates. This year's forum will look a little bit different than in years past, of course, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We will be following Jefferson County public health guidelines to keep everyone safe during the production of this forum, including having the candidates socially distanced and face coverings will be worn by everyone except those of us on camera. Our forum is divided into five sections, one for each of the five city council ward races. Each forum is about a half an hour long. This is the election forum for City Council Ward 1 in the City of Lakewood. And before we meet the candidates, let's take a look at a map of the boundaries of Ward 1. Ward 1 covers the northwestern section of Lakewood. Its borders are roughly West 32nd Avenue south to West Alameda Avenue and from parts of I-70 to as far east as Wadsworth Boulevard. So let's meet the two candidates for the Ward 1 seat. Jeslyn Sharazai and Kathy Kintner. Each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement and one minute for closing statements. I will ask as many questions as time permits, and each candidate will have the chance to respond to each question with a two-minute limit per response. And they will take turns answering first. So, Jeslyn, if you would, your opening statement, please. Well, thank you so much to the League of Women Voters, and thank you, Mark, for opportunity to moderate today's conversation. My name is Jesslyn Sharzai, and I'm running for Lakewood City Council's Ward 1 seat. I made the decision to enter this race last summer in response to the wildfire season. I have kids in my house with respiratory issues, and we found our day-to-day -day life impacted by the smoke and the haze in our community. I, it really got me thinking about how much has changed in our world. We have a changing climate, we have an increased homeless population that we need to consider, and we have an unprecedented need in our affordable housing. We need new and energetic thinking to continue to move Lakewood forward, and I'm committed to doing just that. I have sat on my neighborhood board association for many years, and I'm a charter organizer with the city's Sustainable Neighborhood Program. These experiences have given me countless opportunities to represent and reflect my community and our elected officials. I have spent 15 years working in the nonprofit sector, increasing my skills in building partnership and organizing community. There has not been a person in the recent history of Ward 1 with my lived experience of a young family putting down roots in our community. My kids attend our local schools, they're playing in our parks, and they're recreating in our open spaces. I'm asking in this election that we consider widening the lens of who represents us at the city council level. I'm here to celebrate everything that is great about Lakewood while asking us to lift our heads up and look further down the road at what comes next. Thank you. Thank you, Jeslyn. And now, Kathy, your opening statement, if you would. You have two minutes. Thank you, Mark, and thank you to the League of Women Voters for your long-standing support of this forum. I'm Kathy Kentner, and I'm here today because everything I needed to know for politics and for Lakewood City Council, I learned teaching junior high. Lesson one, people will say things about you that just aren't true. People say that I am anti-growth and anti-development, but that is not true. I am for development with the necessary infrastructure. Development that provides for streets and sidewalks, nearby schools and traffic studies so that we can have traffic patterns that work and we're not all stuck idling in our cars. And most importantly, ample parks and open spaces. Lesson two, civics classes always teach a local elected official's number one job is to represent their constituents, the people who vote them into office. 
As such, I recognize that the priorities to the people of Lakewood and Ward 1 are public safety, infrastructure, and protecting our natural environment. People, property, and the public safety officers who protect them should all feel safe in Lakewood. And lesson three, it's the girls and the nerds who get the work done. I'm a City of Lakewood Planning Commissioner. I'm on my local uh, Water and Sanitation District Board. I sit on the Denver Regional Council of Governments cohort for inclusionary zoning. I have been president of my neighborhood association, the Bonview Neighborhood Association, and an active and involved community member in Ward 1 for more than 20 years. I'm a single parent of kids in Jeff Jefferson County Schools. I'm a Jefferson County School teacher, and I'm your neighbor. And together, I believe that we can have the responsive city government that we teach kids in school we can have. Thank you. Kathy, if you would remain at the podium, please. I'll, I'll just give you the first Sorry? question as we proceed with our rotation. The question is, what would you propose to address homelessness in the city of Lakewood? What action would you propose to address the homeless problem in the city of Lakewood? Mm. Thank you very much for that important question. Uh, this question was brought up last Saturday at a recent forum with both my opponent and I. And this, this is the one issue that it's important that we bring everybody to the table. I feel it is the one thing, uh, I'm sorry, the one important issue that I have no direct solution, but I know that the worst thing that we can do is to not address it. So number one, we need to recognize that we have a great resource in our CAT team, the Community Action Team in Lakewood. We need to expand that resource. And right now, what the CAT team does is generally advise our homeless to move on to something else. That doesn't really help solve the issue. So we can help by sitting down with everybody and looking to the future. One of the things is affordable housing. Again, I sit on the Denver Regional Council of Governments cohort for inclusionary zoning. By having inclusionary zoning laws in Lakewood, we can address some of our homeless problems and by expanding our community action team and having officers that are non-uniform to deal with our mental health issues, we can also address some of the other causes of homelessness. And once we sit down together and look at the root of the problem, it is so much easier to work together and solve that problem. Thank you. All right, Kathy, thank you very much. Jessalyn, if you would come to the podium, we'll ask you the same question from the League of Women Voters. The question again is, what would you propose to address homelessness in Lakewood? What actions would you propose to address the homeless problem in the city of Lakewood? Right, thank you, such an important question. I think that we can all recognize that the pandemic has only put the issue of homelessness in our communities under the microscope. We're seeing an increased need to address this. Early in this campaign, I had an opportunity to sit down with Lakewood law enforcement agents. And they shared that while the homeless population makes up less than 1% of Lakewood's population, they're receiving 14% of all tickets being issued. This is not a great use of our city's municipal resources, and it's not a great use of the police resources. We need to be making more investment in diversion work and co-responder programs. Uh, we have two that exist currently already in Lakewood, and so we need to be doing more in this space. We also see some success in the metro area around the STAR program, so uh, removing sort of armed police officers from responding at all. We currently have a co-responder program and we have opportunities to be looking at this differently and newly. These are nuanced problems that are gonna have um, huge impact on our community's future viability. We need to consider a housing first model. We know that there's tons of research out there that says having housing is fundamental to your ability to find work. It's fundamental to your ability to sort of stabilize your mental health needs. It's fundamental to addressing any sort of substance abuse issues. So when you hear folks saying that we need things like inclusionary zoning and affordable housing, it's important that we look at their actions. We've seen time and time again that we have under-resourced our growing population through our housing needs. There's currently not a path forward under the existing structure that would allow us to meet the growing need for affordable housing. 
We need elected officials who understand a housing first model is going to be important for us to address our community's unhoused population. Thank you. Jessalyn, just remain at the podium, if you will, for the next question. As we continue with our rotation, the police department, the police department has a responsibility for protecting the public in a variety of situations. When carrying out duties as police officers, what charges would you recommend the city of Lakewood and the police department make to protect citizens as well as police? What, what duties, what changes would you recommend the city of Lakewood and the police department make to protect citizens as well as the police? Sure. So we've seen in the last two police academies uh, a not complete force coming through. You know, there, this is a tough job for us to fill positions. That's not unique to police departments. You know, we're all having trouble with our hiring needs. But I think that when we sort of rework how we're using our police force, it, for example, in the, the example that I just gave, we, they should not be addressing our, our homeless population with ticketing and sort of this cycle of incarceration. Let's redirect those services by reallocating resources to include more co-responders in this work, more mental health workers that free up the time for our police officers to deal with some of the increases we're seeing in property-related um, issues in our community. We know that the pandemic, again, has further exasperated our community's um, needs to address this, and we've had a significant amount of opportunity for our um, police force to really re restructure itself. You know, Lakewood Police Department is one of the only agencies that requires a college degree. We do an incredible amount of mental health um, and psychological vetting for our police officers. And so we know as a city that we can be very proud of the progress we've made in policing, but this is a changing world and we need to be thinking about these things differently. So I think that it's important that we provide infrastructure and investment to allow our police to do things that are impacting our day to day around property related things and allow them to free up their time that can be reinforced with opportunities to support the mental health needs of our community. These are nuanced problems, and we need to be thinking about this new and differently. Thank you. Jason, thank you. All right, Kathy, same question for you. Two-minute response time. The police department has a responsibility for protecting the public in a variety of situations. When carrying out duties as police officers, what changes would you recommend the city of Lakewood and the police department make to protect citizens as well as police officers? Thank you for this important question. Uh, Picking back on my opening statement, both the people and property and the public safety officer, officers who protect them should all feel safe in our community. In addition to increasing the number of non-uniformed police officers and code enforcement officers to relieve some of that, we can look at some other ways. Number one, we should sit down at the table with all community members and look what we are doing well. Lakewood is often praised by the professionalism of our police department. We have officers who have college degrees and most residents appreciate this and want this level of professionalism in our police department. However, at the same time, we need to be responsive to community members. Most recently in the last several months, public comment at city council meetings has mostly been focused on one request. And that request is really a simple one that can be uniting. And that is to have a citizen review board. Rather than having this be a divisive issue, if it makes people feel safer to have a citizen review board, then the officers who protect the people are also safer. And it is something that we can come together on. In addition, Lakewood should continue to lead the way and in, in not have to wait for state legislation for things like body cameras, which we still do not yet have in Lakewood. So we can do um, a lot with what we have and come together to do more and be responsive to the demands of our citizens. Thank you. Kathy, if you would remain at the oh, podium, please, thank That's you. for our rotation. The next question is, with the passage of Senate Bill 21-256, which gives local jurisdictions more latitude to set their own gun control regulations, what changes would you support to your city's weapons ordinance regarding gun control regulations? Two minutes. 
So, you know, again, in being responsive to the citizens of Lakewood and what the citizens of Lakewood and residents and my constituents want, this is not one of the priorities for the uh, community members of Lakewood. We see much more of a demand from the people in Lakewood for parks and open spaces. So I support our current legislation, and I do not believe that we need any changes to it at this point. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jeslyn, same question for you. With the passage of Senate Bill 21-256, which gives local jurisdictions more latitude to set their own gun control regulations, what changes would you support to your city's weapons ordinance regarding gun control regulations, if any? Right. <clears throat> I think that this is a, a fantastic opportunity for us to sort of build back trust in, in our community. There has been a, a bit of erosion in people's um, trust in our systems, and this sort of um, shift in how we have more opportunities at the local level to enforce this gives folks the opportunity to add their voice and lend their voice to this work. I think that these are problems that, you know, shift from municipality to municipality, and it's important for us to consider the totality of, um, of gun violence in our communities. Colorado has a long history in this space, and I know that there are varied voices and opinions in this work, and I think that it's important for us to bring many, many stakeholders together to sort of discuss this. You know, I appreciate the opportunity for us to look at this. We can't keep status quo. You know, preservation of our community doesn't mean that we keep reinforcing status quo. And it's important that we take an opportunity to reflect and see what shifts do we need to be making in our communities. And gun control is, you know, an important piece of that. I am a parent of young school-age children, and we think about this every day, you know, as they're practicing drills in their communities and their schools. These are problems that are facing our community in a way that they weren't when I was a young person attending school. And so I think that we have an opportunity to reflect and sort of refine this process by adding many stakeholders across our community in this work. All right, Jessalyn, your next question. Uh, what are your priorities for spending available federal dollars from the American Rescue Plan Act and the proposed infrastructure plans, excuse me, in infrastructure funds? What are your priorities for spending those dollars? Two minutes. Wonderful. Excellent question. You know, I think that we're seeing a tremendous amount of investment coming into our community in response to the global pandemic. And we often hear folks talking about some of the challenges we're faced with as we start to recognize that we're a growing population and we have a growing need to meet the housing uh, capabilities of that growing population. We often hear folks say, we can't do anything more because we don't have an infrastructure that has capabilities to withstand that. I think that using these dollars to reinforce our roads, our bridges, encouraging a connectivity with our sidewalks are going to be an important next step for us to consider the future viability of Lakewood. We cannot continue to keep kicking this can down the road. We have an opportunity to sort of reflect and refine the processes that have been holding us back from any sort of considerations in our community and looking to how do we invest in our infrastructure to ensure that there's something left for our community moving forward. We're all committed to protecting our parks and open spaces, but we also have an opportunity with this investment to sort of look at our systems and what needs to be considered differently. The policing um, example that was given earlier is a great example of that. There are ways that we can be making investments in our community that sort of right-size what our community needs are and how do we shift that with these new investments coming into Lakewood. I'm excited for what comes next. I think that the American Recoveries Plan is providing over $21 million into Lakewood. And so we have a real opportunity to consider how do we meet the growing population needs and how do we meet the backlog of maintenance in our infrastructure needs. So thank you. Thank you, Jesslyn. Kathy, same question for you. Your priorities for spending available American Rescue Plan Act federal dollars and the proposed infrastructure funds as well, your plans for spending. Thank you. I would like to start by thanking you for this question. Infrastructure is one of the priorities that we see on every single community survey from Lakewood residents, even prior to the pandemic. So this gives us a great opportunity to have some funds to put those priorities into action. 
We can purchase and set aside land for parks and open spaces. We have done a wonderful job with our Recovery Act money so far on supporting our small businesses and having small business grants to make sure that our small businesses can withstand the hits that they have um, received. We need to make sure this program stays in effect so that those businesses thrive and survive the pandemic. And then we need to look at the people, the residents, and how can we use this money to better them? Do we have people who are behind on their rent? We could pay the landlords so that they can stay in our community and the landlords can have the money so that they can pay their rent. Our recovery efforts need to focus on people and the priority of the people of Lakewood. And as an elected official, I promise to put the people of Lakewood first in every decision I make. Thank you. All right, Kathy, we're going to ask you for your closing statements if you would remain at the podium. Closing statements are one minute each. And each of you, of course, will have an opportunity to make a closing statement. And Kathy, you will speak first. Your comments, if you please. Thank you. Thank you again to Mark and to the League of Women Voters for this forum. About a dozen years ago, myself and 200 of my neighbors overfilled city council chambers asking city council um, for representation on an issue very important to our neighborhood. There was only one person who spoke in opposition to that request, and it was a lawyer hired by an out-of-state landowner. Imagine my surprise when we had done everything that we teach kids in school to do, and our city council chose to support the one out-of-state interest over every single one of their constituents. I am here today because I will never forget that my job as a local elected official is to represent the people who put me in office, my constituents. I'm a single parent, I'm a Jefferson County public school teacher and your neighbor, and together I believe we can create the responsive city council that we tell kids in school we can have. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. And now Jeslyn, your closing statement, if you would, you have one minute, if you please. Well, thank you. Thank you to the League of Women Voters. Thank you, Mark. Um, we have so much to consider as we exit COVID-19. We are living in unprecedented times and we're navigating uncharted waters. And we're gonna need new and innovative thinking, new energized leadership in this space. I love Lakewood. I'm excited to celebrate all that is great about Lakewood now while recognizing and understanding that we have opportunities for our future. I'm committed to protecting open spaces and parks in our community. I'm committed to the revitalization of West Colfax. And I'm committed to ensuring that sustainable practices are considered and decision-making levels at our city council. I can walk in on day one and get to work with no sort of cloud of concern over any conflict of interest that I might have in this space. We can do better and we should do better. My name's Jesslyn Charzai and I'm asking for your vote for Lakewood Board One City Council. Thank you. And there you have it, our candidates from Ward 1, Jeslyn Sharazai and Kathy Kintner. Thanks, thanks to both of you for answering our questions and for being part of the process. Election Day is November 2nd. All active voters will be mailed a ballot between October 8th and October 15th. For your convenience, there will be an outside ballot drop-off box on the west side of the Civic Center located at 480 South Allison Parkway. If you choose to mail your ballot, be sure that it's mailed early enough to ensure that it arrives by the deadline on Tuesday, November 2nd. For more drop-off box locations, as well as the nearest polling center, go online to jeffco.us slash elections. For candidate and ballot information, please consider using vote411.org, the online voter's guide. This guide provides a side-by-side -side comparison of the candidates for all of the Colorado races. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, I'm Mark Kubrick and this is the Lakewood City Council Candidates Forum. The goal of the forum is to present the views of the candidates for Lakewood City Council in a fair, nonpartisan setting so that you, the voters, can make an informed decision. 
All candidates whose names will appear on the ballot have been invited to participate in this forum. The League of Women Voters of Jefferson County is sponsoring the forum in cooperation with Lakewood 8. The views expressed here will be those of the candidates, not the views of the Jefferson County League of Women Voters or of Lakewood 8. The Jeffco League of Women Voters has provided all of the questions for the candidates. The League takes no stand in support of or opposition to the candidates. This year's forum will look a little bit different than in years past, of course, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We will be following Jefferson County public health guidelines to keep everyone safe during the production of this forum, including having the candidates socially distanced and face coverings will be worn by everyone except those of us on camera. Our forum is divided into five sections, one for each of the five city council ward races. Each forum is about a half an hour long. This is the election forum for City Council Ward 2 in the City of Lakewood. Before we meet the candidates, let's take a look at a map of the boundaries of Ward 2. Ward 2 extends over the northeastern section of Lakewood, roughly from West 26th Avenue south to West Alameda Avenue, and from Kipling Street east to Sheridan Boulevard. So let's now meet the two candidates for Ward 2, Charles Davis and Sophia Mayotte Guerrero. The candidates will have two minutes for an opening statement and one minute for closing comments. I will ask as many questions as time permits, and they will have the chance to respond to each question with a two-minute limit per response. So, Charles, you will go first with an opening statement. If you would come to the podium, please, your opening statement, if you will. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you for the League of Women Voters, again, for this amazing opportunity. Um, I'm running for city council in Ward 2 to keep my leadership going in Northeast Lakewood. I've been an active member of Northeast Lakewood, co-chair of Two Creeks, formed a couple of uh, North Lakewood committees um, for a number of years. And the goal is to improve and move our city into the future. I'm a mortgage loan officer. I've been in the technical arena for 20 some years. I have a wonderful wife. We've been married uh, for 25 years now. First moved to Lakewood 26 years ago and to be with my fiance and live just south of Villa Italia. Now, I haven't lived in Lakewood the whole time, but in the time since we were there and where I live now, Lakewood has changed dramatically. And the important part about progress and time is that things continue to move forward. Um, Villa Italia was dying when I first moved here, and then it disappeared and was replaced with Belmar, which is a vibrant, wonderful community. However, it's also suffering through the pandemic and it needs more energy to continue to rebuild. I've got two amazing children, a daughter who's 22 who's studying data analytics and a son who's 20 who is, well, frankly, trying to figure out his way. And that's okay. Um, my goal is to be an active leader and to be somebody who can bring council back together. Over the last couple of years, our city council, our city government has really struggled with strife um, and really lack of continuity and discretion and professionalism. Um, I believe that a strong leader being able to come in and bring both sides together, being helped negotiate middle ground and, and create compromise is what is needed to help move people into the future. Lakewood's an amazing city and we deserve an amazing government that everybody can have respect for and everybody can appreciate. Thank you for your time. And again, thank you, Mark. And thank you for the League of Women Voters. Appreciate it. Thank you, Charles Davis. And now opening comments from Sophia Mayotte Guerrero. Sophia, if you would come to the podium, and you also have two minutes for an opening statement. <coughs> Hello, everybody, and thank you to Mark, and thank you to the League of Women Voters for having us here today. My name is Sofia Mayotte Guerrero, and I am running for Ward 2 City Council because I want to be a community advocate at the city level. I believe that the city's overall direction and priorities should be based on meeting the everyday needs of our citizens and residents, especially as we're recovering from a COVID pandemic. I first moved to the Lakewood uh, area, well, to Lakewood specifically, um, about a little over seven years ago uh, in 2014, and I uh, was a renter, which means that I actually moved around all in Ward 2 mostly, except for one year where I was briefly just barely in Wheat Ridge over the line on 26th Avenue, but I was really trying to stay in this area because I fell in love with it. During that time, I was also able to work as a community organizer within the Latino community, and I got to hear from people who aren't always being seen at that city governance level. 
Then I moved on to become um, a policy advocate at Conservation Colorado, where I was able to learn in-depth issues like transportation policy, climate policy, um, recycling issues, and other sustainability policy. What I want to do as your next city councilor is I want to bring my own personal experience as a Latina, as someone who has rented in the area, and as somebody who has this community outreach background to identify what the real problems are, what the priorities are, what the needs are of the community. And then I want to use my technical background, my ability to learn new policy, my ability to understand policy that already exists, to ensure that those are creating innovative solutions based in data. I know that if we all work together and I have your support, I will be able to make a Lakewood that is more inclusive, affordable, and sustainable. Thank you. So if you would remain at the podium, the first question from the League of Women Voters is for you. The question is, what would you propose to address homelessness in the city of Lakewood? What actions would you propose to address homelessness in the city of Lakewood? This is an issue that I'm really hearing when I'm knocking on the doors. Um, and I'm hearing from folks who are living near that Colfax corridor. And what I'm so impressed by is the amount of compassion and thoughtfulness that's really coming from the people who are living near the areas where there are the most visible homelessness. And what people are saying to me is that they don't necessarily want a strictly enforcement model. And that's also what the police of Lakewood are saying. There needs to be more innovation. We need to be thinking about how we're supporting homeless people to end that cycle if that's what they want. And we need to be thinking about how we are able to uh, provide the necessary resources to keep our streets clean and safe, um, recognizing that eliminating homelessness isn't realistic. I want to think about how we can make a safe area for everybody to enjoy their parks and walk down Colfax, but also recognize that homeless folks are, in a way, a part of our community, and they need to be treated with dignity and respect. So we have two homeless navigators uh, on the police force right now, and I think we need to expand that program. We need to think about how we're able to give folks um, access to mental health services. Um, there are, is a, a shelter, hopefully in the works, in the next few years here in Lakewood, and that will also be incredibly helpful. But what we really need to be thinking about is how we're connecting those who need resources most uh, to the city or to other public health services that allow them to get the help and support that they need. All right, Sophia, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And Charles, as we continue to observe our COVID protocols, if you would approach the podium, the same question for you. What would you propose to address homelessness in the city of Lakewood? In two minutes. Thank you. Um, so the interesting thing about homelessness is it's not, it's a category of people who don't have a place to live, certainly. But there's a very wide um, 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 gap, really, between the different types of people of homelessness. There are people who like the homeless lifestyle. Um, and we should allow them to continue to live how they want to live. However, we should be able to provide them with some services that they would need on a regular basis. Um, a few weeks ago, um, St. Bernadette's up here up in Two Creeks in Ward 2 had a mobile shower clinic available um, for homeless people to come and take showers and clean themselves if they wanted to. It wasn't very well publicized. It wasn't put out there throughout the kind of social media channels. And as such, it wasn't very well attended. I think one of the things that we really could do is out, do outreach to our, our, our religious organizations, our other community organizations, who have, who have very good inroads and inreach into some of the people who are kind of on the fringes, and do it in such a way that there's more opportunity for them. Um, the other thing about homelessness is we need creative solutions. The, the way our markets work, and I'm a mortgage lender, is ha the housing market is unapproachable and unattainable for most people. So we really should work on housing in, in subsidized pricing, et cetera. But we also should look at tiny house communities. We should look at turning some of our empty big box stores like Sears and Westlands into you know, at least some temporary shelters. We're coming up on winter. And there, there's a shelter in Lakewood for animals who are stray. But we don't have a shelter in Lakewood for people who don't have a place to go. Um, the Elks does a great job. There is a whole network of organizations in Northeast Lakewood and throughout Lakewood that when it gets super cold, the city kind of waves a bat signal or something like that, and they open up for people to come in and stay when it's super cold and there's really threats from the environment to people who are out on the streets. We need to have a more holistic approach to providing a wide range of services and a wide range of opportunities for people. Thank you. Charles, you will answer the next question first. 
Question is, the police department has a responsibility for protecting the public in a variety of situations. When carrying out duties as police officers, what changes would you recommend the City of Lakewood and the police department make to protect both citizens and police officers? It's really a great question and really very timely. Um, you know, Lakewood has a very unique police force in that our police force requires a, a, at least a bachelor's degree in education. So I believe our police force is a step above a significant number of police forces in the metro area. Um, so continuing that education would be fantastic. We need to do that. Um, as far as the response and kind of keeping the balance of the citizenry safe and also not overreacting situations, is I believe we need more tools like the CAT team, which is a, a police responder, but also with usually like a social worker going out in a non-aggressive fashion. Um, usually when the police are called, 911's called, it's an emergency. That's what 911 is. It's an emergency. And the response of somebody in that stance has a very uh, a specific type of approach. What we need to, is, when there are emergencies, obviously have emergency response. But when somebody's calling because somebody's rooting around the garbage cans in their alley, we don't need that type of response. We need a more laid back response usually. Um, and I think having additional training, additional funding, and additional officers who are trained specifically in that capacity will go a long way. Um, body cams are one of the things that Liquid does not have currently. I am for body cams. I think transparency at all levels is, is really necessary and needed. And I know there's a lot of infrastructure and technology and it's being looked at currently. It's also very expensive. And so we have to balance our, our, our taxes and the costs of all this with the needs. And, and right now I think overall, our, our emergency response is really weighted heavily towards being exactly that, emergency response in, in an in a emergency type of stance. And I think we need to be create, create a little bit more balance where there's a more um, relaxed response, a relaxed team available for people to go out and, and have questions and have police interference and have police available as public safety officers without being kind of militarized police. I think we really need to have a good balance of that. Thank you. Charles, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Sophia, now it is your opportunity to answer the question. And the question is, the police department has a responsibility for protecting the public in a variety of situations. When carrying out duties as police officers, what changes would you recommend the city of Lakewood and the police department make to protect citizens as well as police officers? Um, I, we are incredibly lucky in Lakewood that we do have a more innovative police force than many other areas in the state, in the metro, in the country. Um, we do have the CAT team, the community advocacy team. We do have two homeless navigators, and we are working on a, a pilot program on diversion um, and working with Jefferson County Mental Health to put mental health professionals out with our uniformed officers. Um, and I'm interested in how we are taking this moment in time, really, where there's so much attention uh, to responsible policing, to supporting community with resources rather than enforcement models. When we have all of that political conversation that's happening for folks and it's top of mind, how are we capitalizing on that moment and making sure that we are leading the way on what that type of policing and community support can, can look like? Um, I know that the Denver Star program, one of its key differences with any of the current programs that we have here in Lakewood is that it allows mental health professionals who have been trained to go out without an armed police. And of course, our armed police aren't trying to escalate just by standing there in their uniform, but some people are just afraid, and that by nature can escalate that situation. Um, and I'm it, it goes back to the, the same conversation about homelessness as well. How are we really recognizing that the needs of a community have changed over time? And I know that during COVID specifically, uh, there was a lot more um, neighbor disputes, like people who are frustrated about um, people's uh, habits on their block, in part because people are more, were more at home in the last 18 months than they have ever been before. And so little issues like that, issues like homeless folks um, who are maybe experiencing mental health crisis or are in the throes of addiction, they really need to be met with folks who are trained to deal with those specific problems. Um, and our police are, are very well trained, um, but they are not necessarily trained to deal with all of those different nuances that are happening within the community. And so I really want to think about how we are better resourcing for support rather than just enforcement. 
All right, Sophia. Thank you. You will answer the next question oh, yes. first. <laughs> Remain at the podium. So with the passage of Senate Bill 21-256, which gives local jurisdictions more latitude to set their own gun control regulations, what changes would you support to your city's weapon ordinance regarding gun control regulations? Gun control is such a difficult issue, particularly when you look at it on the local level, because of course we are a part of a metro and we are not um, in charge of all of the humans that come in and out of our borders as a Lakewood city. The first time that a gun was brought to my school, I was in seventh grade, um, and there was not a shooting that day. It was intervened with early, and I feel incredibly lucky that that didn't turn into a much more traumatic event like lots of my peers and people younger than me have had to experience. I do think that, like with many other issues, local governments can be pilot programs. We can innovate and we can help lead the way on what will work other places. Recognizing that we need to limit people's ability to access weapons who aren't um, of their right mind. Recognizing that we need to limit the types of weapons that are easily accessible. And also thinking long term about how we're creating a society where there are more mental health services for young people that help to prevent shootings from happening in the first place are all really critical. And I will say first off that I am not an expert on gun control, but I do know what it feels like to be on the receiving end of crisis with guns. And so I would be very willing and interested to learn more from experts in my community. All right, Sophia, thank you very much. Charles, your opportunity to answer the same question. With the passage of Senate Bill 21-256, which gives local jurisdictions more latitude to set their own gun control regulations, what changes would you support to your city's weapons ordinance regarding gun control regulations? So the Second Amendment, right? Um, it, it is granted that everybody has the right to bear arms. And as we know, it, our political tree, up and down, left and right, um, falls off of that currently. Um, free speech somehow is now intertwined with gun control. Um, everything is intertwined with the Second Amendment. And it becomes very difficult to have a healthy conversation um, about any changes to gun control, any changes to, uh, that might impact somebody's ability to follow the Second Amendment if that so chooses. Um, I personally believe that um, training and education is the most important piece about gun ownership. Um, you know, if, if somebody is going to purchase and own a weapon, I think that's completely within their rights. I think, however, there should be stepped up requirements for yearly licensing, early, yearly training. I, I do like one of the things that Sophia mentioned, that the local governments have the ability to be a little bit more um, assertive on the ground level, you know, um, coming up with new and innovative things, which I think is the term she used, which I think is fantastic. Um, I don't see any reason why a, a somebody who has the respect for weapons. Um, my uncle was, was very much uh, um, for, for guns, for gun control, made his own bullets, did the whole thing. Um, and, and while I was not raised that way, I respected the fact that he respected the weapon. And I think one of the things that's been lost is with the rampant availability of weapons and the political discourse that intertwines is nobody's looked at how to create more education about the danger of them, um, about how much harm a single gunshot can do to a family, to a school, to an organization, to whatever. And I think the city has an opportunity to, if they choose, to be on the cutting edge of that and maybe require some additional licensing or yearly training. Thank you. All right, Charles, you will be the first to answer our last question, which is, what are your priorities for spending available American Rescue Plan federal dollars and the proposed infrastructure funds as well. Your plans for spending those dollars. Well, this is an awesome question for representatives of Northeast Lakewood because we have the oldest infrastructure in Lakewood. Um, you know, my house itself is built in 1955. My sewer pipes, I think, were built by the Romans. Um, it is very much needed to invest in our infrastructure. We've got five state highways going through Ward 2. Um, we have a very hard time 
negotiating repair and upgrades of those highways because CDOT is its own separate entity. Um, and people don't understand, you know, they think Wadsworth is so busy, what are we gonna do about it? Lakewood's not gonna do anything about it because it's a state highway. The only way to improve these types of things is to have a little bit more um, communication between the city, the state, and, and be honest with you, the, the representatives, the, the citizens. Um, Sixth Avenue and Wadsworth Bridge is one of the most decrepit bridges in the entire state. It is finally made up to a tier one project. If the state has money, I would hope that we replace that finally because it is a um, highly a dangerous interchange. There are accidents there daily, and it is f literally chunks falling off of it. So I would love to see our that one interchange changed kind of first thing. That should be first priority. Second thing should be literally going up and down our state highways um, and our, our major city arterials and repaving them, fixing the potholes, improving them so that they last longer than one winter cycle. If you pull off going westbound on 6th and Avenue to northbound Wadsworth, there is a pothole that has been there for seven and a half years, and they fill it. And within about a month, it's back. I would love to see that fixed in, per in permanence. But again, that's an issue because it's a state highway. We have to have the state invest in that. So the other thing we have in Northeast Lakewood is our stormwater. It's already on the slate. I would love to see that addressed. We have huge flooding issues. Essentially anything east of Wadsworth is a flood zone. And so we can't improve our businesses. We can't change business titles. They can't get insurance because of being in a flood zone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Charles. Mm -hmm. Now, Sophia, the same question for you. As we continue in our rotation, what are your priorities for spending available American Rescue Plan federal dollars and the proposed infrastructure funds? Thank you. What is so wonderful and fascinating about the opportunity that we have with both of these funds, the American Rescue Plan and the infrastructure funds, um, is that it is no matter what you think about what's happening fed federally, we as a municipality, as Lakewood, will have an opportunity to spend some of these one-time dollars, hopefully for long-time solutions. Um, things that are going to hopefully set us on a trajectory of building back better after COVID in a way that actually brings everyone along with us. And in terms of infrastructure, when we think about infrastructure, yes, absolutely, the, the maintenance of our roads and our sidewalks are really critical. But another key component that goes along with infrastructure is climate resilience. So if we invest these dollars in a way that does promote things like better floodways and draining, as, as mentioned, it's a huge, huge issue here in Lakewood, um, but also recognizing local efficiency needs, uh, tree canopy, um, and also even transit issues and trying to come up with regional solutions with the transit is going to be really critical to make sure that those one-time dollars go a long way. Um, I am well connected and in building relationships with several of the municipalities around us, including Wheat Ridge, Edgewater, um, and our state level officials in order to have a better understanding of how we can spend that money as a team. Because again, our borders are not where people's lives end. Um, and it needs to be regional solutions. And then the next thing is thinking about what are the things beyond infrastructure that are marked uh, that can be funded within the American Rescue Plan. A couple of the key components there that come to my mind and the issues that I'm hearing on the doors of what folks need most is affordable housing and attainable housing, even homeownership um, subsidies as a possibility, and then also really thinking about children. Right? Schools are still not consistently open, and we're really lucky in this area that the schools are doing an incredible job trying to manage our continuing pandemic. Um, but there's an opportunity for child care, which helps to allow full families to get back into the workforce. And there is also an opportunity to think about other programming that can impact children who really are, you know, the future of Lakewood. Thank you. All right, Sophia, thank you. And the moment has arrived for your closing statement. You will have one minute to close. I again want to reiterate thanks for everybody who has made today happen. I have been knocking on over 100 doors a week, uh, some weeks more like 300 doors, and I'm talking to the community and I'm learning about what people really need. This last 18 months here in Lakewood and globally has been some of the hardest that anyone has ever had to experience and everyone's level of difficulty uh, is different, but we all are in, in need of recovery as a team. And what I want to make sure that I do is bring in people who are too busy to be able to show up for city meetings regularly. I will do the outreach so that I know what's on your mind. And I will 
work diligently to collaborate internally with the city, with other regional leaders, to help to make some of those innovations and solutions come to light. I know that together, if I have your support, we can build an affordable, inclusive, and sustainable future for Lakewood, and I hope that I can count on your vote by November 2nd. Thank you, Sophia. Charles, now your opportunity for a closing statement. We should mention we appreciate both our candidates following our COVID procedures. Thank you very much. Charles, uh, like Sophia, you have one minute for your closing comments. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, League of Women Voters. And, and thank you, everybody who, who tunes in and watches this. Um, being informed is really the most important piece of the whole thing. Um, I've been an active member of Northeast Lakewood, you know, for the better part of a decade. Um, I have been on the ground. I've picked up trash um, on Colfax at 6 in the morning. And you have not lived until you've been on Colfax at 6 in the morning. Um, and our part of Lakewood is very unique. And it requires unique leadership. It requires leadership who's been there, who's been around, and who has the connections within the city um, and within the community to move forward. You know, I'm not a politician. I'm not running as a politician. I'm running as a citizen of Lake Lakewood who wants to move Lakewood forward. Um, I want to be a part of the bigger picture. You know, in the same way Belmar you know, rose out of the ashes, literally, um, of Villa Italia. I think Lakewood, out of this difficult time that we've had over the last few years, certainly during the pandemic, but also with our, our crisis that we've had on council, I think moving forward is a very important part, and being a good, strong leader is part of that. Appreciate the opportunity to talk to you, and look forward to your support. Thank you. And there you have it. Thanks to the city council candidates for Ward 2, Charles Davis and Sophia Mayotte Guerrero. Thanks to both of you for being here this morning and being part of the process. Election Day is November 2nd. All active voters will be mailed a ballot between October 8th and October 15th. For your convenience, there will be an outside ballot drop-off box on the west side of the Civic Center, located at 480 South Allison Parkway. If you choose to mail your ballot, be sure that it's mailed early enough to ensure that it arrives by the deadline on Tuesday, November 2nd. For more drop-off box locations, as well as the nearest polling center, go online to jeffco.us slash elections. For candidate and ballot information, please consider using Vote411.org, the online voter's guide. This guide provides a side-by-side -side comparison of the candidates for all of the Colorado races. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, I'm Mark Kubrick and this is the Lakewood City Council Candidates Forum. The goal of the forum is to present the views of the candidates for Lakewood City Council in a fair, nonpartisan setting so that you, the voters, can make an informed decision. All candidates whose names will appear on the ballot have been invited to participate in this forum. The League of Women Voters of Jefferson County is sponsoring the forum in cooperation with Lakewood 8. The views expressed here will be those of the candidates, not the views of the Jefferson County League of Women Voters or of Lakewood 8. The Jeffco League of Women Voters has provided all of the questions for the candidates. The League takes no stand in support of or opposition to the candidates. This year's forum will look a little bit different than in years past, of course, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We will be following Jefferson County public health guidelines to keep everyone safe during the production of this forum, including having the candidates socially distanced and face coverings will be worn by everyone except those of us on camera. Our forum is divided into five sections, one for each of the five city council ward races. Each forum is about a half an hour long. This is the election forum for city council ward three in the city of Lakewood. Before we meet the candidates, let's take a look at a map of the boundaries of Ward 3. Ward 3 covers the central and eastern section of the city of Lakewood, roughly from Kipling Parkway East to Sheridan Boulevard and from West Alameda Avenue to as far south as West Yale Avenue. The candidates for Ward 3 are Rebecca Stewart and the incumbent Mike Bita. Each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement and one minute for closing comments. I will ask as many questions as time permits and each candidate will have the chance to respond to each question with a two minute limit per response. And they will take turns answering first. So Rebecca, in our rotation, you will go first. If you would please approach the pro podium, we would have your opening statement, please.
Well, thank you, Mark, and thank you to the League of Women Voters for having us. I'm Rebecca Stewart, and I'm running to be your next city councilor in Ward 3. Lakewood needs fresh voices as we look towards the future and make decisions that are going to affect the next generations. I have a stake in the future of Lakewood. I can remember being in tears on the phone with our realtor as he told me that we had lost out on yet another offer on a home, and it wouldn't be the last time. My husband and I lost out on eight different offers before we were able to ultimately purchase our home in Lakewood. Lakewood's becoming an increasingly unaffordable place for working families and people who want to retire and age in place in their community. I believe that everyone deserves the opportunity to set down roots and earn a good life. I will strive to be the type of public servant who leads from a place of empathy and relatability. As chief of operations at a healthcare nonprofit, I work with people every single day to provide the type of compassionate leadership that Lakewood deserves. As a music therapist, I've spent my career working with and advocating for people with disabilities, and I believe everyone deserves a fair shot at a good life. In my job, I listen carefully, I think critically, and I work to address the challenging issues that my clients are facing every day. And these skills are incredibly important for our public servants to have when we approach issues that affect our residents. I am proud to be an active member in my community as a member of our Sustainable Weir Gulch Gardens Neighborhood Association, two of our local small business associations, and I'm really proud to have earned the trust and support of our amazing first responders here in Lakewood. I'm running because you deserve a fresh, positive voice as we look towards the future. We cannot prescribe 1970s solutions to 2021 issues. A former Lakewood mayor once said that a city either moves forward or it moves backwards, but it does not stay the same. The choice in this election is clear. We need fresh voices as we look towards the future, and I would be honored to have your vote in November. All right, but Rebecca, thank you very much. Thank you. And now, Mike, if you will, your opening statement, you also will have two minutes. Thank you, Mark, and thank you to the League of Women Voters. Hello, I'm Mike Bita, and I'm uh, running for re-election to Lakewood City Council for Ward 3. I want to make a special thank you to the vo voters of Ward 3 for electing me to serve as your city council four years ago. At that time, I ran to be an advocate for our citizens and our, uh, for our city government in order to give them a voice and, uh, on how our government was being run. During my first term, I lobbied and voted to change the city's laws in order to allow you, the voters, to vote on the 1% limited growth initiative, which you later passed into law. During my first term, I'm happy to report, we made major advances in, uh, cr in fighting crime, graffiti, and gangs in Lakewood. We have also improved our parks, streets, lights, and drainage during my, during my four years. Uh, also during my first term, I lobbied for and vo uh, voted for the purchase of 65 acres of open space that is uh, known as the uh, Taylor, Taylor Open Space, and, um, and it will soon be open to uh, our citizens for them to enjoy. I also lobbied and voted for uh, $1.8 million in improvements in Lasley Park and in another million dollars for our Founders Park, which are both located in Ward 3. Uh, I oppose the development of contaminated land on the Federal Center for multiple, multiple housing that could harm our future residents and subject our city to a lawsuit. I oppose raising taxes on our most uh, uh, residents who, who could least afford it. Thank you. Mike, if you will remain at the podium, you do get the first question. And that question from the League of Women Voters is, what would you propose to address homelessness in the city of Lakewood? What actions would you propose to address the problem of homelessness in the city of Lakewood? Uh, well, Mark, thank you. The, as a matter of fact, the city of Lakewood is currently addressing that problem, and we have a very 
humane and uh, robust program uh, w for that. And we call it the uh, CAT team, the Community Action Team. And they work with our police department uh, in, um, uh, in uh, uh, dealing with our homeless. And um, what I would uh, propose is that we continue to, to, to uh, use that program. The uh, members of the CAT team are not only the police officers who are specially trained in dealing with the homeless, but there's also, they also have social workers who uh, work with them. And they are able, when they make a contact with homeless, they are able to uh, sit down with them and provide them alternatives such as housing, food, medical, and so forth. Uh, they especially do that with our veterans who are homeless. And so this program has worked very well, and in, and in fact, it's a model, has become a model for other cities around the country, and uh, there's been a lot of talk about it. Well, Lakewood was, is, is way ahead of the game on that. So I, my, my uh, proposal would be to continue with the CAT team, uh, you know, provide it even more resources as necessary. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Rebecca, we have the same question for you. And by the way, we appreciate both of you following our COVID uh, regular. We know it's cumbersome, but thank you very much. Absolutely. What can we do, right? <laughs> so, Rebecca, the question is, what would you propose to address homelessness in the city of Lakewood? What solutions or actions would you take to address the homeless problem in the city? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good question. It's a pretty pressing issue that we're facing in Lakewood and, frankly, all across the metro area right now. It's a concern I've heard from a lot of residents as I've been talking to them at the doors. The amazing thing is that Lakewood is a place of people who are full of compassion. People who I talk to um, concerned about the homeless issues are concerned that we don't have resources for them. And that is something I'd really like to take a look at when I am your city councilor. Like Mike said, I am really proud of our CAT team in Lakewood. They are an incredible group of men and women who are very compassionate and well-trained and have done such great work with our homeless population here in Lakewood already. I would love to expand our CAT team and increase the amount of homeless navigators we have on the CAT team. We only have two right now, and frankly, that's just not enough resources for the amount of unhoused people who we are seeing in Lakewood. Additionally, Lakewood is working with several other cities and our county right now to provide two homeless navigation centers that will include housing. I am very supportive of that and would like to see that move forward and we'll work with our community partners like the action team um, and so many other great resources that we have um, here in Lakewood to continue to serve people who are experiencing homelessness, particularly as a result of this pandemic. All right, Rebecca, thank you. And you have the first turn at the next question, and that question is, the police department has a responsibility for protecting the public in a variety of situations. When carrying out duties as police officers, what changes would you recommend the city of Lakewood and the police department make to protect both citizens and police officers? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I think we are in a really unique and important position here in Lakewood because of the type of police force that we already have. We have an incredibly progressive and forward-thinking police department here in Lakewood, but I don't think that conversations about how we can do better and also supporting our existing police agents are mutually exclusive. I think they can exist in the same world. Um, I am really excited that our police agency has actually partnered with the Jefferson Center for Mental Health, and we now have two mental health co-responders as well who go out with our agents when appropriate, when there are calls that are made that would really benefit from having a licensed and a trained mental health professional. I think we need more programs like that. We have also been really innovative in our law enforcement assisted 
diversion programs for kids and people who don't need to be in the system. If we can get them the help and the resources that they need to make changes in their lives before we put them in our um, criminal justice system. I am so supportive of programs like that. I think it's really innovative and I think that there continues to be room for us to think of solutions like that that are going to benefit our police department, keep them safer, keep them doing what they're trained to do and what they need to be doing to keep our community safe, and in addition, supporting residents who might need responses and services that don't always include an armed sworn police officer. Thank All you. All right. Thank you, Rebecca. Mike, the same question for you as you approach the podium. The police department has a responsibility for protecting the public in a variety of situations. When carrying out duties as police officers, what changes would you recommend the City of Lakewood and the police department make to protect citizens as well as police officers? Well, thank you for the question. The, um, probably the most important function of city government is to protect its citizens, to provide safety for, 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 uh, for its citizens and also for its police officers. We have a really stellar police department with a very excellent record of, uh, you know, using innovative approaches to deal with offenders. Um, the problem that I see at this point is that the state legislature has decided and seen fit to meddle into how we run our police department. They have uh, passed laws recently which in essence handcuff our officers in enforcing the law when they're on the streets. For example, one of those is the recent law that they passed which takes away the uh, immunity, personal immunity of police officers for errors that they may make while they're uh, on the street. And uh, what this has done is caused many of our police officers to decide to leave the force and to, and to pursue other, other uh, careers. And, and it's really an unfair law because just about every other public official from the governor to the legislatures, judges, um, district attorneys, they all have uh, immunity. But the officers on the street who have the most difficult and dangerous jobs do not. So we need to push back on those kinds of laws we can do so under the um, uh, home rule provisions of the Colorado Constitution, which provide that uh, home rule cities have the authority to, um, to uh, self-govern uh, themselves and particularly their police department. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And Mike, you are first to answer our next question. So if you will remain at the podium. And the question is, with the passage of Senate Bill 21-256, which gives local jurisdictions more latitude to set their own gun control regulations, what changes would you support to your city's weapons ordinance regarding gun control regulations? Two minutes. Well, I'm not aware that we have any uh, stringent gun control um, ordinances at this time, certainly I would be in, in favor of um, rules that would require guns to be in a safe place, especially if there are young children around. I think, I think that is an is a, uh, is a absolute requirement. The rest of the, most of the rest of it is controlled by state law, uh, such as um, you know, concealed carry laws. Those are already in place in state law and, of course, would preempt anything that we might pass because those are considered uh, matters of statewide concern. So I think that the ability for the city to, to, um, to control the, uh, the use of firearms is going to be somewhat limited, one, by the, sec by the sec uh, Second Amendment and also, uh, also by uh, existing federal and state laws. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Rebecca, your opportunity to answer the same question. And the question is, with the passage of Senate Bill 21-256, which gives local jurisdictions more latitude to set their own gun control regulations, what changes would you support to your city's weapons ordinance regarding gun control regulations? 
Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, you know, like Mike, I am not aware of very many local ordinances that we do have um, that covers gun restrictions and gun laws, but I do support safe gun legislation. I think it's really important that we keep guns out of the hands of kids, that we keep guns out of the hands of people who are going to harm other people. You deserve to feel safe in your community. You deserve to feel safe walking out your door wherever you are in Lakewood, walking down the street, walking in the park. And I think what we need to be talking about is more comprehensive ways to address public safety. Sometimes that includes guns, but frankly, it includes a lot of other things as well. Um, and so I would be really interested in looking into ways that we can continue to make Lakewood a safe place for people to live, for people to work, for people to raise a family, for people to retire. And that may or may not include things that we can do at a local level. Um, but really it's about making sure that Lakewood is a safe and inclusive community for everyone who wants to live here and have a good life. All right, but Rebecca, and that brings us to our last question. You will answer first, and that is, what are your priorities for spending available American Rescue Plan dollars, federal dollars, and the proposed infrastructure funds, your priorities for spending those monies? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good question. As I have been speaking with people at the doors, a couple of different things come up. People are really concerned about continuing to invest in sustainability in our city, as well as addressing housing costs and cost of living. Now with our American Rescue Plan dollars, we have a really amazing opportunity to invest in once in a generation infrastructure investments to make sure that we're moving our city forward when it comes to sustainability, to clean energy, reducing our emissions, and investing in clean air and water. That is really where I would like to see these funds go. Our sustainability department at the city recently proposed some different projects in the next budget for the city of Lakewood to improve clean infrastructure, charging stations, make sure that we are supporting our residents as they move to things like solar and water reductions in their home as well. And I think with these American Rescue Plan dollars, we have an amazing opportunity to take it so many steps further and really make sure that Lakewood is at the forefront of innovation and investment when it comes to sustainability and investing in clean air and water as a community. We need to make sure that we are preserving what people love about living in Lakewood for the next generation making sure that our kids have clean air to breathe and clean water to drink and that we're mitigating the effects of climate change. And that's really where I would support these American Rescue Plan dollars going towards. All right, Rebecca, thank you. Thank and now, you. Mike, your opportunity for the same question. You also will have two minutes to answer. And the question again is, what are your priorities for spending available American Rescue Plan federal dollars and the proposed infrastructure funds as well. Your priorities for spending those funds. Well, thank you for the question. First of all, uh, I need to tell you that those, uh, that issue is actually being uh, discussed right, right as we speak, right now as we go through the budget process for 2022. The, uh, uh, there is still, uh, there'll be about $10.2 million that will be coming through that, through that grant from the government for infrastructure purposes. And those, those uh, funds have largely been um, already prioritized and contained in our, in, our, in our proposed budget, which is online for everybody to see. I can direct you to page 324, 325 in the appendix, which uh, lays out exactly what those funds are going to be used for. And I can tell you that one of them, uh, certainly part of, the, part of those funds are going to be used for some of the things that have already been mentioned for, um, you know, uh, increased sustainability, to improve our sustainability and to uh, uh, sort of catch up with our uh, current sustainability plan. Uh, it also to uh, be used for electric vehicles. So this has already been appropriated or 
it, it needs to be finalized uh, and will be voted on in October by the City Council. But these funds have already been largely appropriated, to, so to some extent this is a moot point because uh, we've already put those priorities in the budget. Um, there's also some priorities in use for, for uh, infrastructure like some of our streets, which uh, would, uh, are, are in dire need of repair, and also some repairs at our, uh, at our shop, at our city shop. So uh, again, go to the budget and you can see where these funds are, have already been um, uh, earmarked for, for appropriation. All right, Thank Mike, you. if you will remain at the podium, it is time now for closing comments. Each of you will have one minute to close. And, uh, Mike, it is your opportunity to speak first, your closing comments, if you will. Thank you, and again, thank you to the League of Women Voters for having this, this forum. And um, uh, I would just like to say I've, it's been an honor and a privilege to represent my constituents the last four years. We've made some, some great pro uh, progress and strides in Lakewood with the purchase of open space, uh, with uh, keeping our taxes down. We had a very challenging couple of years with the COVID pandemic. And uh, we've, we've come through that very well. There, uh, you know, there's been uh, millions and millions of people that have died worldwide. The pandemic has taken its toll on Lakewood as well. It has affected our businesses and our population. But uh, we, have, we have been able to do that. And I'm proud to say I've been part of the process and the leadership that have done that. And I ask you to uh, give me another four years so that I continue with that leadership role. Thank you very much. All right, Mike, thank you very much. And Rebecca, now, if you would please, your closing statement. You also have one minute to close. Thank you, Mark, and thank you again to the League for having us here today. I am running to be your next city councilor because we need fresh, positive voices as we look towards the future of our community. We all have a stake in the future of Lakewood, and I want to represent you as we move forward. I believe everyone deserves the opportunity to earn a good life. I want to make sure that we are investing in sustainability and clean air and water and making sure that Lakewood is an affordable, safe, and inclusive community for everyone. I have the leadership experience to move this city forward and to represent you. I will be an accessible, city councilor for you and I would be honored to earn your vote in November. Thank you Rebecca. Thanks to both of you for being so courteous and observing our times and for observing our COVID restrictions as well. Those are the city council candidates in Ward 3, Rebecca Stewart and Mike Bida. Election day is November 2nd. All active voters will be mailed a ballot between October 8th and October 15th. For your convenience, there will be an outside ballot drop-off box on the west side of the Civic Center, located at 480 South Allison Parkway. If you choose to mail your ballot, be sure that it's mailed early enough to ensure that it arrives by the deadline on Tuesday, November 2nd. For more drop-off box locations, as well as the nearest polling center, go online to jeffco.us slash elections. For candidate and ballot information, please consider using Vote411.org, the online voter's guide. This guide provides a side-by-side -side comparison of the candidates for all of the Colorado races. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, I'm Mark Kubrick and this is the Lakewood City Council Candidates Forum. The goal of the forum is to present the views of the candidates for Lakewood City Council in a fair, nonpartisan setting so that you, the voters, can make an informed decision. All candidates whose names will appear on the ballot have been invited to participate in this forum. The League of Women Voters of Jefferson County is sponsoring the forum in cooperation with Lakewood 8. The views expressed here will be those of the candidates, not the views of the Jefferson County League of Women Voters or of Lakewood 8. The Jeffco League of Women Voters has provided all of the questions for the candidates. The League takes no stand in support of or opposition to the candidates. This year's forum will look a little bit different than in years past, of course, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. 
We will be following Jefferson County public health guidelines to keep everyone safe during the production of this forum, including having the candidates socially distanced and face coverings will be worn by everyone except those of us on camera. Our forum is divided into five sections, one for each of the five city council ward races. Each forum is about a half an hour long. This is the election forum for City Council Ward 4 in the City of Lakewood. Before we meet the candidates, let's take a look at a map of the boundaries of Ward 4. Ward 4 stretches across the most westerly part of Lakewood, roughly from C-470 east to Kipling Parkway and from West Alameda Avenue south to Morrison Road. This area includes Green Mountain and William Frederick Hayden Park. We have two candidates in the race for Ward 4, Christopher Arland and Rich Olver. And we learned just a couple of days before taping this forum that Rich Olver has COVID and will not be in attendance. The League of Women Voters is allowing him a representative to give opening statements, that being Jan Struherrick. Mr. Herrick will not be able to participate in the question and answer portion of the forum, but will be open to give not only an opening statement, but a closing statement as well. That said, there will be two minutes each for an opening statement and one minute for closing statements. And Christopher Arlen, you will have the first opportunity to give your opening statement. If you will approach the podium, you will have two minutes for your opening comments. And thank you both for observing our COVID restrictions. Thank you. I'd first like to start by sending my thoughts for, to Rich Over for his speedy recovery. My name is Christopher Arlen and I'm running for Lakewood City Council because I believe that Lakewood is truly full of possibilities. Over the past couple of years, I've had the good fortune to come to know and befriend many of my neighbors throughout Lakewood. I've met people who consider themselves to be fiercely progressive and those who consider themselves to be staunchly conservative. I've had the honor of exploring diverse perspectives and considering the issues and ideas from many different vantage points, even those that aren't my own. And what I draw from this experience is the fact that we all love Lakewood, even through our disagreements. And as I've listened and talked and listened more, I find a common theme, and that theme is that people love Lakewood, but they also want a city government that they can believe in, that they can trust. They believe that government should be small as possible, but it should be for the citizens and by the citizens and represent the citizens. I'm running for Lakewood City Council because I believe that Lakewood is truly full of possibilities. I'm committed to the work of building our inclusive community, and I'm asking for your support and join me on that quest. Again, my name is Christopher Arlen. Thank you. All right, Christopher, thank you very much. And now Jan Struherrick, as we said, will be speaking for candidate Rich Olver, who has been hospitalized unexpectedly. She will give an opening statement on his behalf. Jan, when you're ready, you have two minutes. Hello, my name is not Rich Over, but I assume that you figured that out since uh, Rich recently had the COVID. He has asked me to stand in for him. I am Jan Stuherrick, but from here on, on what I, when I say I am really rich talking. I caught the case of COVID last week. I'm fine, minor symptoms because I was vaccinated last January. That probably makes me a breakthrough, although I have no idea why there's a specific name for this. Vaccines were never going to stop anyone from catching COVID. We knew that from day one. Their advantage is that they are very good at preventing us from becoming deathly ill. Vaccines are not magic. They are a tool that we are, that we are using to keep as many people healthy as possible. I recommend that everyone get a vaccine, but I do not believe and require them. Uh, if you look at my website, nrichlakewood.com slash COVID, I list 11 reasons why some of my family and friends have not gotten a shot. I respect that they are high on the grown-up spectrum and can make their decisions. I also list four reasons why people should get a vaccination. It can keep you from dying, and that is one that stands out for me. Masks are not also magic, but they are a useful tool. Anyone who acts like masks are are the complete and only answer or are only fooling themselves. If I were in surgery, I would want everyone there to be wearing an N95 mask and I'd be horrified if they only wore bandanas. But 
masking has turned into a performance art. Take this form. I can take the masks off when I talk, but otherwise I need to, to keep them on. Um, I believe that I'm better informed on COVID than most. You can be too. If you go to the COVID pages of my website, nrichlakewood.com, there are many charts and links and studies and news stories, a lot of them from the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, if you want to follow the science, elect an assi elected a scientist. Um, enough about COVID. I'm miffed about that. I, um, some of the things I want to say is the Green Mountain Water Board recall. I'm totally against it. I can't see any reason for it. I haven't seen anyone articulate even half a good reason for it. I have seen uh, platitudes fly fast and furious. Uh, but that's not my style. I'm more a meat and potato guy. Jen, I'm I'd sorry, like... but according to our rules, you've oh. exceeded the two-minute limits. Sorry. I'm sorry. But, but, but thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to clarify that as the moderator, I do not know that Mr. Olvid has been hospitalized. All I know as moderator is that he has COVID. I just wanted to make that clarification. He's at home. Okay, he's at and, home. All right. And uh, in quarantine. All right. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jan. And we'll have you back for closing statements. But according to the rules, uh, Christopher, if you would approach the podium, you will get all the questions today. And we'll proceed with the first one from the League of Women Voters. And that question is, what would you propose to address the homeless problem in the city of Lakewood? What are your actions or proposals to address homelessness in Lakewood? Homelessness is not a single one-size-fits-all issue. People don't just automatically become homeless. There's generally a slide of trajectory that they fall upon that leads them into homelessness. I believe in upstream thinking. We can address the issue of homelessness through social services and housing and other means, but I think that we should ask ourselves, why are people becoming homeless? What supports that can we put so that people can be successful in housing and stay in housing? Homelessness is a serious issue, and it's not one size fits all. We have working families living in our parks in their cars, trying to get children to school so they can get to work, so they can come home back to that car in that parking lot that they have to move from time to time to time so that they won't be pegged as homeless or kicked off. I think that there's a lot that we can do, but I think as a preventionist, prevention is the first step. We can pull people out of the hole and celebrate that, but wouldn't we be a better community if we can stand in front of the hole and keep people from falling in the hole in the first place. We have some partners that we work with in the social services field. I think that we should see what we can do to empower them so that we can support them so that they can support us as a city. Because at the end of the day, our social safety net are our partners, not so much the city. Thank you. All right, Christopher, your next question regards the police department, which has a responsibility for protecting the public in a variety of situations. Mm -hmm. When carrying out duties as police officers, what changes would you recommend the city of Lakewood and the police department make to protect citizens as well as police officers? What changes would you propose, if any? That is a great question. I have read through all of the Lakewood police policies, and I'm pr proud to say that we have really good policies. When I watch the news and I see certain things that are happening, I say to myself, well, that wouldn't happen in Lakewood because we have policies that prevent that. I think that there are a wide range of options before we get to policing. For example, the CAT team that we have and exploring alternatives to policing, have social workers or other paraprofessionals um, who are unseen instead of armed police officers to de-escalate and to resolve a situation. I think that we can do that. But I also think that we can take a very hard look at our department and that we should see those things that we're doing right and we should extol those things as a national model. But we should also look at where we're falling down and we should see what we can do for corrective action to sort of fix those areas. And then likewise, we should extol those things as a national um, model. Good is good, but we're not perfect. We have ways to go. And I think that there's a lot to, that can be done to strengthen the partnership between our police agents and our communities. I'm always an advocate for community policing. I think that policing works better when the community has faith in the police and the police have faith and trust in the community. We're all in this together, and the public safety issues that we face, we must face those together as well. 
All right, thank you, Christopher. Your next question. With the passage of Senate Bill 21-256, which gives local jurisdictions more latitude to set their own gun control regulations, what changes would you support to your city's weapons ordinance regarding gun control leg- regulations, if any? I think that gun control is an um, unfortunate misnomer. I'm more about gun safety and how we have guns um, that aren't in the hands of people who have mental health issues, who have histories of domestic violence, of those that are, have, have shown themselves to be a threat to individuals or societies. I don't propose to have the answer to that question. But I think that as a community, it is a question that we should be asking ourselves. Not about whether people want to take your guns or not. That's not a real conversation. That binary is not real. But how do we uphold the Second Amendment and keep us all safe? Those of us who choose to carry weapons and those of us who don't for whatever reasons. This is not a one-size-fits-all problem. And I think that, unfortunately, the binary that we get into when we talk about gun safety is you're either for or you're against. I'm not interested in the argument. I'm much more interested in the solution. And our last question, what are your priorities for spending available American Rescue Plan dollars, federal dollars, and the proposed infrastructure dollars as well? What are, you, what are your plans, if any, for shaping and spending those dollars? I think that we have an incredible opportunity in front of us. And that opportunity is to sort of reinvest in Lakewood and our communities and our, our, our small our, our small business sector and the nonprofit sector so that we have a city that is truly an inclusive city, a, an inclusive community where things are equitable, where there is not this side versus that side or this side or this side that are sharing. But how do we all together make sense of the deficiencies that have been exposed by COVID? How do we take advantage of the resources that are coming in because of COVID? and not only move forward and build back better, but build back equitably. So that no matter where you are in Lakewood, no matter who you are in Lakewood, the opportunities that we have are equal to us so that we can all thrive, so that we can all build our lives here in Lakewood and live in a community that we're all proud of. I think that COVID has exposed a lot of deficiencies, but I view these as opportunities. These are opportunities to step back, to take a look, and to reimagine what we want Lakewood to grow into and use this investment, this unique opportunity born out of a global pandemic, to take a new step forward with a new vision for Lakewood and Lakewood's inclusive future. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. And we'll let Jan go ahead and give closing uh, comments first of all. Uh, Jan, if you would, both candidates will get one minute for closing statements. And we'll begin with Jan Straherick, who is speaking for candidate Rich Olver, who was unable to attend today. So, Jan, if you will, you have one minute for a closing statement. All right. Again, hi, I am uh, Jan Straherick, and I'm speaking for Rich Olver. Did you know that I'm a registered, I'm registered as unaffiliated? I like it that way as I can cherry pick what either side does correctly and ignore, ignore other silly ideas. I tried hard not to switch those two around. I first moved to Lakewood in 1980 and I lived in the apartments behind King Suvers. I lived in the same house for the past 23 years, about a mile away. I have a master's degree in geophysics and I'm also a geologist. I've worked in the oil and gas industry for my entire career. This means that I survived the downturns, with, which was no small feat. I've had my own seismic processing company since the 90s. My primary sport is road cycling and I've ridden every street in Ward 4. That was me on your ring doorbell. Um, I'm very much aware that everything I just mentioned is meaningless. Who doesn't take part in some sport in Colorado? I'd like to tell you more on how I want uh, only to do good things and nothing bad. Unfortunately, the League of Women Voters were not really interested in making this as fair as they could and to give me more time. That just gives me a higher hill to climb, and without challenges, um, how could anyone reach their full potential? I hope you'll visit my website and uh, at nrichlakewood.com. All right, Jan, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Christopher, this is your opportunity for an opening statement, and we'll give you an extra 20 seconds here. <laughs> we uh, ran over in our first comments. 
according to our rules, we think that's fair. So your closing comments, if you will. Thank you. I'm running for Lakewood City Council because I believe in people. And even more, I believe that people of goodwill can accomplish what seems impossible if they come together and put their minds to it. So thank you again to the League of Women Voters for this opportunity to share my values and my hopes for Lakewood. I believe in Lakewood, and I know that you do too. I'm asking you to believe in Lakewood with me as I believe in Lakewood with you. I truly do believe that Lakewood is full of possibilities, and I'm curious and excited to see what it is that we can imagine and we can create together for Lakewood's inclusive future. The invitation that I'm offering you in my candidacy is this. Let's make Lakewood more than special. Let's make Lakewood spectacular. Let's build a Lakewood that inspires young families to grow their lives here, that attracts business and industries so that we can have a robust economy. And let's be proactive as we look at transportation um, safety, as we look at expanding open space and yes, even dog parks. But let's do it together. I'm not interested in the fight, I'm interested in the solution. My name is Christopher Arlen. I invite you to visit my website at Christopher, the number four, Lakewood.com. And I'm asking for your support and for your vote. Thank you. All right, Christopher, thank you very much. Christopher, thank you for running and being part of the process. Jan, thank you for coming in and speaking for uh, uh, Mr. Olver today, and we wish him a speedy recovery. And those, uh, those are the candidates in Ward 4, Rich Olver and Christopher Arlen. And thank you all for participating in our forum today. Election Day is November 2nd. All active voters will be mailed a ballot between October 8th and October 15th. For your convenience, there will be an outside ballot drop-off box on the west side of the Civic Center, located at 480 South Allison Parkway. If you choose to mail your ballot, be sure that it's mailed early enough to ensure that it arrives by the deadline on Tuesday, November 2nd. For more drop-off box locations, as well as the nearest polling center, go online to jeffco.us slash elections. For candidate and ballot information, please consider using vote411.org, the online voter's guide. This guide provides a side-by-side -side comparison of the candidates for all of the Colorado races. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, I'm Mark Kubrick and this is the Lakewood City Council Candidates Forum. The goal of the forum is to present the views of the candidates for Lakewood City Council in a fair, nonpartisan setting so that you, the voters, can make an informed decision. All candidates whose names will appear on the ballot have been invited to participate in this forum. The League of Women Voters of Jefferson County is sponsoring the forum in cooperation with Lakewood 8. The views expressed here will be those of the candidates, not the views of the Jefferson County League of Women Voters or of Lakewood 8. The Jeffco League of Women Voters has provided all of the questions for the candidates. The League takes no stand in support of or opposition to the candidates. This year's forum will look a little bit different than in years past, of course, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We will be following Jefferson County public health guidelines to keep everyone safe during the production of this forum, including having the candidates socially distanced and face coverings will be worn by everyone except those of us on camera. Our forum is divided into five sections, one for each of the five city council ward races. Each forum is about a half an hour long. This is the election forum for city council ward five in the city of Lakewood. Before we meet the candidates, let's take a look at a map of the boundaries of ward five. Ward 5 takes in the southernmost portions of Lakewood, roughly from Florida Avenue south to Hampton Avenue and from Kipling Parkway east to Wadsworth Boulevard. Parts of Ward 5 extend even farther south to West Grant Ranch Boulevard and reach as far west as C-470, covering Bear Creek Lake Park and the Homestead and Fox Hollow Golf Courses. Ward 5 has two seats open, one four-year term and a two-year term that will be considered a full term following state election law and the Lakewood City Charter. Electors in Ward 5 will vote for two representatives. The candidate receiving the greatest number of votes will receive the four-year term, and the candidate receiving the next greatest number of votes will receive the two-year term. There are four candidates for the two Ward 5 seats, Michael Gunstenson, Wendy Strom, Tom Keefe, and Mary Jansen. 
Each will have two minutes for an opening statement and one minute for closing comments. And I will ask as many questions as time permits, and each candidate will have the chance to respond to each question with a two-minute limit per response. And they'll take turns answering. First, Michael, we would like to begin with you and your opening statement. If you would come to the podium, please. And you have two minutes. Thank you, Mark, and uh, League of Women Voters for hosting this forum. Uh, I think this is a great way for uh, the citizens of Lakewood to uh, hear what the candidates have to say and formulate an opinion on who they want to vote for. So the reason I'm running is I want to see the city get back to uh, following its own rules and uh, get to the point where its citizens don't have to sue the city to get them to do the right thing. So you're probably wondering what I'm talking about. Uh, the latest... Um, uh, example of that is the white fence farm where the city went against the ODP. If you don't know what an ODP is, that's the governing document for neighborhoods. Uh, the city went, went against the ODP and told uh, the citizens over there that uh, their hands were tied, that the developer wanted to put in a six-story apartment building um, with over 3,000 units. And lo and behold, the citizens sued the city, which has happened quite um, uh, which has happened several times in the last few years, and I believe that's really wrong. But the citizens sued the city. Uh, they won. They, um, uh, they were able to get the development down to uh, three stories, uh, more uh, inclined with the neighborhood, and uh, it, uh, they got the, the numbers down, and then the rest of the land is going to revert back to a park. So that's just one of the reasons why I'm running. Um, there's lots more on my website, michaelgunstanson.com, and uh, if you uh, want to contact me there, you certainly can. I would love to uh, interact with you and answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael Gunstanson. And now, Wendy Strom, your opening comments, if you will. Two minutes as well. Hello. Thank you. My name is Wendy Strom, and I'm a financial planner and small business owner. I've lived in the city of Lakewood for 17 years and have been actively involved uh, in our community for over a decade. From co-leading an effort to revitalize the playground and disrepair to advocating for our students and your finances, I've been working hard to improve our quality of, way, quality of life here in Lakewood. Um, the reasons that I am running is to be a voice at the table with economic recovery to help our workers and our small businesses get back on track. From safety on our streets for our kids, cars and cyclists. Uh, we've got room to move, a room to improve there. And because we, as the people of Lakewood, deserve a council that will address the housing needs of our community. This has become an incredibly divisive issue in our city, and I do believe that we can preserve the heritage of the Lakewood that we love and still meet the housing needs of our community. I have a track record for bringing people together to solve big problems. And um, as a certified financial planner, have been helping families be good stewards and make good decisions with their money for over 20 years. I'm excited to turn my um, efforts to helping the city do the same thing so that we can make sure that we continue to keep our parks clean and safe, keep the program services that we love and rely on. And most importantly, too, as um, my, this is my first experience running for office, however, I have been leading multiple organizations for the better part of my life. I understand the challenges of leadership, and I also understand the importance of being an open ear, being objective, and also um, bringing people together to solve big problems. So that's why I'm here today, and I look forward to um, giving you more information as we go. Thank you. All right, Wendy. Wendy Strom, thank you. Tom Keefe, now it's your opportunity for opening statements, if you will. You also have two minutes. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, fellow candidates, and everyone who's been able to put this wonderful forum together. And most importantly, you are voters in Lakewood. I've, I've been in policy and public service for my entire career, for my whole life. And I'm here to tell you that experience matters, and this election matters. I've been in education now for over 20 years. I'm a college professor here in Lakewood. I teach history, politics, and world religions. My wife's an educator as well. She's a Jeffco grad, and now she's been teaching Jeffco for over 16 years. 
Our kids are Jeffco grads. We love our Jeffco schools, we love Jeffco, and we love our city of Lakewood. And that's why I'm running for city council, to give back to this great city that's given so much to me and to my family. Last year when my daughter uh, went to college, in the midst of a, a pandemic no less, I looked around and I, and I knew that this was the time to give back more. I had been on the Jefferson County Historical Commission, I'd been on the JD1 Judicial Retention Commission, but I wanted to give back. I share our community's deep appreciation for our law enforcement. I want to support our small businesses, our big businesses. I want to support our quality of life. I want to build a greener, safer, and stronger Lakewood. Greener can make us stronger and safer. And when I'm on Lakewood City Council, I'm going to work really hard to bring my policy experience as well as civility back to government, and I want to build back stronger and better together. Thank you. Thank All right, you. Tom, thank you. And Mary Jansen, now your opportunity for an opening statement. You also have two minutes. Thank you. Thank you, League. Thank you, Lakewood. And thank you, City of Lakewood um, citizens. I'm Mary Jansen, and I've lived in Lakewood for 55 years, and I'm the mom of two grown sons. Tonight, you'll hear all the candidates express support for open space and public service. Safety, um, we all really love our city, but you need to know what makes me different from the others. Being a city councilor is like operating a business and being the head of the, uh, of the customer service department. I'll share with you what makes me the best choice. My husband and I own Jansen Photography up on Jewel Avenue. We've been in business for the last 35 years. I'm sure we have photographed you or someone that you know. Over the years, we've successfully dealt with economic recessions using proper budgeting, managing investments, and frugal spending. Financial man management is the key to any successful venture. With my business savvy and responsive customer service skills, I am great and qualified choice to serve you as city councilor and as your representative. This choice really is about you. Who will serve you best? What I bring to the table is my independence and my out-of-the-box thinking. I won't be a rubber stamp. I'm running because we want Lakewood to stay Lakewood, not Denver. I will evaluate and research each and every policy proposal brought to me as a city councilor. Within the short time of our opening statement, it would be difficult to fully describe my deep support for law enforcement, but I need to let you know that I'm the only candidate in Ward 5 that is being endorsed by uh, Jefferson, County Sheriff, uh, Jefferson County Sheriff Jeff Schrader. Thank you. All right, Mary, thank you as well. And so now we'll go to our first question, questions provided by the League of Women Voters. Wendy, if you would please come back to the podium, you will answer first. And again, each candidate will have two minutes to answer each question. First question is, what would you propose to address homelessness in the city of Lakewood, your proposals for addressing the problem of homelessness in the city of Lakewood. Thank you. Addressing homelessness um, has so many, so many layers to it. Um, first and foremost, uh, Lakewood has a, a homeless navigation team actually through the Lakewood Police Department that has been doing a really good job actually helping our homeless people find access to services. Um, that helps, but there's a lot more room for movement that we could make on that. Uh, I'd love to see that navigator team actually expanded um, by, you know, I, don't, I don't know how many people, but we definitely need more people out there. We also have um, access to, there's a new uh, services uh, porch light that has become available within our county as well that is something that I would love to see. They're also doing... Um, building right now, or and I shouldn't say building, but they're looking into facilities that offer housing opportunities in addition to services that are located within that location so that people that are homeless um, also have easy access to the services that can help create pathways to becoming sustainable and a part of the you know, working community so that they can get back on their feet. But I do believe that one of the things that is really important in taking into consideration our homeless situation is that many of the homeless people, um, their families that were one thing away from losing their home or not being able to afford their appointment and so, or for their apartment. So they're, 
There are root causes that we also need to address that are along the lines of housing affordability and accessibility too. And that's a whole different conversation that we won't have time for this morning, but I do think that that's a big part of this, the conversation is addressing affordability as well. Thank you. All right, Wendy, thank you very much. Tom, this will be your opportunity to answer the same question. You also have two minutes. Question again, what would you propose to address homelessness in the city of Lakewood? Well, first of all, I think homelessness at times has become a a stigma uh, that has been used against people. Uh, Homelessness is not a a crime. And we we look at uh, some of the calls uh, to our police department. While the homeless population represents a, a small number of the Lakewood population, the calls regarding homelessness seem to be uh, out of proportion. This is also tied to improving our law enforcement's ability to respond to other uh, issues, criminal activity. If we build on our co-responder and our navigator programs, if we partner with our community uh, neighbors, uh, Westminster, um, Edgewater, and Wheat Ridge, and all of the people who uh, uh, touch the borders of Lakewood, then we can work on uh, assisting the people who are experiencing home insecurity more effectively and remove that stigma. Again, most people who are experiencing home insecurity uh, are women who have been uh, victims of domestic violence, uh, people who are suffering addiction, and unfortunately, our veterans, if we, can, if we work on issues of domestic violence, if we work on issues of addiction, and if we work on ways to support our veterans, all of these are ways that we can address homelessness in Lakewood and across the Front Range. Thank you. All right, Tom, thank you. Mary, your opportunity now. If you'll return to the podium. Same question. Okay. What would you propose to address homelessness in the city of Lakewood? Two minutes. It definitely is a problem. And I think maybe sometimes we need to uh, address the problem before someone becomes homeless. Um, actually working on um, if someone's needing help, they can get faith, faith-based, um, is able to help um, with homelessness. And also um, expand with the, the city of Lakewood um, Police Department and um, helping with that. Um, also, there's food banks that are, are helping our homeless people. And um, actually, uh, the, the, uh, there is a drug problem. <laughs> there is a drug problem, and mental health needs to be addressed, um, getting people the help that they need. Um, and so that's something that would need to be help, worked on. Thank you. All right, Mary, thank you. Michael, your opportunity now. Same question, what would you propose to address homelessness in the city of Lakewood, and you also have two minutes for your response. Thanks. So <clears throat> the main problem with homelessness is they don't have homes. So it seems to me a simple fix. Get them a place to live. So uh, when I first became a candidate, I held a, uh, a Zoom forum, which we had about 30 people in the Zoom forum talking about homelessness. Uh, I spoke with... Uh, a representative from Colorado Coalition for the Homeless uh, about what we might could do. And we hit upon what might be a solution for Lakewood. And that is, if you're familiar with the park and ride that's at Wadsworth and Hamden, right across the street, RTD owns 22 acres. It's just vacant land. It's sitting there. Um, the kids used to ride their uh, dirt bikes over there and, uh, you know, shred it up a little bit until RTD put up a fence. But It's just sitting there, not generating any revenue for RTD, not really doing anything but growing a lot of weeds. Well, the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless thinks we could put about uh, 400 tiny houses on that land. This would give people a place to live, to kind of get their lives back together. Uh, They would rent these properties, so there's uh, uh, revenue going back to RTD. They're also learning to uh, be responsible and, uh, and to get their bi- lives back on track. Right across the street's the park and ride, so they would have access to public transportation to get wherever they need. I think this is an excellent solution. I've talked to um, the, uh, the folks at um, uh, Habitat for Humanity. They're willing to chip in and help build these tiny houses. just seems like a win-win for the city. Thank you. All right, Michael, thank you very much. 
Tom, you will be the first respondent to our next question. You would come back to the podium. The question is, the police department has a responsibility for protecting the public in a variety of situations in the city of Lakewood. When carrying out duties as police officers, what changes would you recommend the city of Lakewood and the police department make to protect citizens as well as police officers? Two minutes. Thank you. That's a, a wonderful question, a wonderful opportunity to, to again address our our law enforcement, uh, we're known as the cradle of police chiefs. Lakewood ha has been respected uh, not just locally but regionally and nationally for decades. And I think that we have the opportunity to continue to lead. I'm a firm believer in community policing. I love it when I see uh, police officers uh, walking a beat on bicycles, uh, and, and, and watching the, those engagements with particularly our youth. Sometimes uh, I go down and I've seen the Jefferson County mounted uh, police units uh, with their horses uh, playing and talking uh, to children and having those community interactions, uh, making uh, law enforcement seem accessible. We know they're accessible, but developing a culture uh, in, in, with the youth of knowing that their law enforcement agents are their friends and, and are there uh, to, to support them is, is part of what we, again, call poli uh, community policing. In terms of other opportunities to, to grow uh, the department, we have a wonderful uh, uh, Lakewood employee uh, tuition reimbursement fund. I would like to look at other ways that we could incentivize, for example, uh, master's degree or advanced training in social work and psychology uh, within our sworn agents. And if we also develop more co-responder programs and uh, co-navigator programs, if there are ways that we can take things off of the shoulders of our sworn agents, then that frees them up to do more things that only our sworn agents can do. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Mary, you will be next to answer this question. Question again, the police department has a responsibility for protecting the public in a variety of situations. When carrying out duties as police officers, what changes would you recommend the city of Lakewood and the police department make to protect citizens as well as police officers? And so I think that our police department can't do it all on their own. Um, they're a little short-staffed, and I think they need some help getting more um, recruits um, and also using Neighborhood Watch Program. I think the Neighborhood Watch Program needs to be expanded and actually has people in the neighborhood. There's a lot of elder people who have been actually solving a lot of crimes lately, um, and they have been uh, great, great help to our police. And also having more... Um, police drive around your neighborhood, it is a good comfort to know that they are there. I know I've had a couple instances and they watched out for me and I was very, very help, very, very grateful for that. We do have a great, great Lakewood Police Department. I am very, very um, supportive of all of them. And so if there's anything we can all do, we can just always help them and give them the support that they need. Thank you. All right, thank you. Michael, you'll answer the question next. The question again is, when carrying out duties as police officers, what changes would you recommend that the city of Lakewood and the police department make to protect citizens as well as police officers on the force? Thanks. So the city of Aurora just enacted a pilot program that's been very successful in other cities around the country. It involves a team of mental health experts going out into the field to handle mental health calls. Um, they currently do not take an officer on those calls. I think an officer should go with them. I think Lakewood would benefit from having a team like that, multiple teams. Uh, one of the uh, complaints, uh, this was a thread on next door that I started. Uh, one of the uh, concerns that some citizens had was that they aren't, they aren't on the night shift when a lot of these calls come in. So I think we'd ha we need to have a uh, the same shifts that we have for officers, I think we need to have this team go. I'd like to see uh, Lakewood expand its police department. They are understaffed, but not according to city council. City council sets the uh, police force at 282 officers. That's currently what we're at. Uh, I would like to see that expanded by 40. We have plenty of money to pay for it. We're, we're talking about spending $4 million for a new maintenance facility when our current ma maintenance facility will make due. 
so we could take that money and hire 40 new officers. I also would like to see a substation go in over at Belmar. One of the things I, one of the reasons I think the traffic to Belmar is down is because there's a lot of crime, there's a lot of uh, break into cars and things like that. And if we had a greater police presence, I think that would go down and people would feel more comfortable about coming back to Belmar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. And Wendy, you will take the question last. What changes would you recommend the City of Lakewood and the Police Department make to protect citizens as well as protect officers? Thank you. Yes, um, we do have a very um, highly respected police department here in the city of Lakewood. Um, you know, we're not all perfect and there's always room for improvement, especially as we see life change and community needs change. And Lakewood already does have, like the community policing that it's had in place um, actually for decades has been a very good program that absolutely continuate on that. But we also have programs in place right now where they do have two Jefferson County health providers, mental health providers that are responding um, we also have the homeless navigators that I mentioned earlier. And then we now have a new program, LEAD program, that is actually designed to help get um, folks that are util utilizing drugs where it's not necessarily a jailable offense, and let's get them the help that they need rather than ending them in jail, which can continue a cycle that doesn't... Um, and advantageously, you know, it, we, we can do better by our people there. I would love to see all of those programs expand, um, utilizing our sworn officers in ways that they are absolutely trained for, and we having more mental health providers that are addressing the needs of our community members that need mental health support. Um, there is also the planning department has announced a new mediation program that I think will be helpful. It's not within the the guys of the Lakewood Police Department, but they're there to help mediate among neighbor disputes. And I do think that that can help reduce some of the response that might be necessary from our sworn agents. So several things that we can do. It all depends on reallocating funds. Where can we find the money? Making sure that we're using it responsibly where it is and re-diverting to making sure that we're keeping our community safe in a multiple different ways. So thank you very much for thank the you. question. Thank you, Wendy. All right, Mary, you are... Uh in our rotation, first for this next question from the League of Women Voters, and the question is, with the passage of Senate Bill 21-256, which gives local jurisdictions more latitude to set their own gun control regulations, what changes, if any, would you support to the city's weapons ordinance regarding gun control regulations? Okay, so I believe that everybody has a right to defend themselves. Um, I do believe in um, the gun responsibility, that people need to be trained in how to, how to what a gun is for and, and the, the rules of that city. And that's, that's where I stand with that. Okay. okay. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you very much. Michael, you are next with this question. Again, with the passage of Senate Bill 21-256, which gives local jurisdictions more latitude to set their own gun control regulations, what changes, if any, would you support to your city's weapons ordinance regarding gun control regulations? Thanks. So, uh, full disclosure, I don't own any guns. I, uh, I have owned guns in the past. I grew up on a horse ranch in Texas, and they were, uh, they were necessary uh, back then. Uh, uh, since then, I've lived in mostly urban areas. I've never felt the need to have a gun. Uh, that doesn't mean I want to take your gun from you. Uh, I think, uh, like Mary said, uh, I support people that want to have guns, having guns. I think you ought to get trained. Uh, I would like to see people take more responsibility to keep them out of the hands of children so we don't get five-year-olds killing themselves. Uh, but other than that, I think uh, the city's policy is pretty much good to go. All right, thank you. Tom, in the rotation, you are next for this question again. What changes would you support, if any, to your city's weapons ordinance regarding gun control regulations? Thank you. When we look at the way the state legislature has been uh, devolving powers back to the municipalities, it's a wonderful opportunity for communities to take care of their communities the way they want to. And we also have uh, statutory 
uh, changes that have implemented the red flag laws. I think that the municipal uh, ordinances should be uh, in compliance and uh, address the red flag laws in which if there is a threat uh, of domestic violence or uh, otherwise uh, threats to individuals to harm themselves or others, that those guns have to be turned over to the police. Uh, and I also think that a municipality should implement um, close uh, regulation of, in terms of gun security, not to take guns away from people who obviously ha have constitutional rights to have those guns, but to make sure that those guns are locked and secured so other people don't have access to them. Thank you. All right, Tom, thank you. And Wendy, your opportunity for this question, what changes would you support to your city's weapons ordinance, re if, if any changes, regarding gun control regulations in Lakewood? Thank you. I think uh, any changes that might be proposed or evaluated, it's crucial that we work in collaboration or at least awareness with other municipalities around us. We have a unique situation in the fact that is where I live, um, we're actually just right across the street from Denver. So we have to be really cognizant of what Denver has in place. People don't even know when they're crossing from Denver into Lakewood or in Ward 5's um, situation, Lakewood to Littleton back to Denver within 30 seconds. So that's super critical for us to keep um, in mind of. And I do think that rather than necessarily addressing the weapons itself, again, coming back to the question of how we change operation or improve upon operation with Lakewood Police Department, we really need a solid foundation of mental health providers that are out there helping to respond to a community that has mental health needs. And that is something that can really go into conjunction of um, working together with our community on identifying areas where someone is at risk of being a danger to themselves or others and being able to mitigate the risk that way. We do also, one of the bills that was passed this past year, and I don't remember the number, but it was um, founded on identifying risks and ways to reduce gun violence. And I think it's very critical for their city to continue to monitor, work with that office that will be set up with this in the state of Colorado to identify what they are noticing and what impl or implications we see and what kind of policy changes we might want to make in response to that. All right, Wendy, thank you. Thank you. And Michael, you are first in rotation for our last question. And that question is, what are your priorities for spending available American Rescue Plan dollars, which are federal dollars, and the proposed infrastructure funds as well? What are your priorities for spending those dollars? Right. So <clears throat> there are several sidewalks around Lakewood that need to be replaced that are in disrepair. That'd be where I'd start. Um, the uh, I'd like to see the city spend more on our open space. We've uh, had a park. It's currently named Pink View. It's in Ward 4. It's the old Taylor Farm. Uh, we've had it for five years. It's currently uh, inaccessible to citizens unless you want to jump the fence and risk getting charged with trespassing. But I would like to see us go ahead and get that going. Uh, I mean, five years is, a, is long enough. I mean, we need to get that thing open and get people walking through there and experiencing the nature that's over there. Uh, neighborhoods need more parks. Uh, Ward 1 could use some more. I would use those funds for parks and fixing our uh, broken infrastructure. All right, Michael, thank you. Wendy, this is your opportunity. Again, what are your priorities for spending available American Rescue Plan funds and the proposed infrastructure funds as well? Well, um, as the financial planner in the room, uh, my biggest priority would be for the city to evaluate what they can do now with these extra dollars that won't be well they'll become more will be coming in next year but what we can do now to reduce expenses down the road uh, we do have some budgetary challenges that are coming down uh, over the next few years and what can we do now to reduce our outflow in the years to come so that would first and foremost be uh, my recommendation, homelessness is something that we absolutely need to address. We're also in, we're very lucky in the fact that within Lakewood and Jefferson County, we, um, we reside in a place that has a significant amount of collaboration. Collaboration between different cities within our county. We have collaboration. There's also an organization called Lakewood Connects that brings together businesses, schools, 
um, faith-based community and government in order to be able to make change. And bring, building on the collaboration that's already in place. Oh, and the Action Center, I forgot. I did not forget about the Action Center, but that one is a huge one that many, many of us have benefited from and have supported over the years. Being able to fund and, and support our homeless people or people within our communities that are one step away from being homeless. How can we help them find and get to more financial security and a pathway to sufficiency. And then lastly, economic recovery, um, getting our workers back on track, getting our small businesses back on track. Uh, I personally would like to not have to show up at a restaurant, one of my favorite restaurants, to find it closed anymore. That's happened way too much over the last year and a half. And for us to be able to know that our small business owners are in a place where they are financially secure and they can continue to provide the goods and services that we want to get from them um, is something that I would like us to be able to invest in with our American Rescue Plan dollars. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Tom? You will be next in the rotation. What are your priorities for spending available American Rescue Plan federal dollars and the proposed infrastructure dollars as well? Yeah, thank goodness that Washington stepped up and is supporting uh, local and state communities with the American Rescue Plan uh, funding. And I think that when we look at that, we, we need to almost take a triage approach a, and see where, where are the losses today that we can stem and, and stop. And uh, as was mentioned earlier, we need to make sure that uh, our businesses are, are uh, secure financially and that they can keep their doors open. Those are, those are businesses that provide jobs and uh, businesses that provide revenue to the city uh, through sales tax. I think we also, uh, most of us know that the uh, moratorium on, on rent um, evictions uh, nationally ha has waned. And so we should look at uh, ways that we could take some of that money to make sure that there, um, evictions for mortgage uh, delinquency or rent delinquency uh, doesn't make a homeless problem in Lakewood more of a problem. So after that's that, that triage is fixed. Then we need to, to look at ourselves and our financial security. Check out our reserve fund. Make sure that's solvent. And then look at, and then the third part is to dream, right? To look at the sustainability plan that talked about a tree canopy. Uh, the, the feasibility study that's going to be done about solar energy being uh, used on municipal properties. Dream and invest and, and make Lakewood a safer, stronger, and greener community for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And Mary, now your opportunity to tell us what your priorities are for spending available American Rescue Plan Act federal dollars and the proposed dollars in the infrastructure program. Um, so I, I totally agree that the money that we get, we, we need to prioritize that for uh, spending for issues that we, that we are facing. Um, I think a lot of a lot of that we're facing is uh, a less in tax revenue um, because uh, some of the building that's not going to be able to be done. So um, some of the money I think should go exactly like Michael said. Let's get the, that Taylor Ranch. Let's get that going so our, our folks can actually start enjoying that. Um, the homeless, we need to address that and 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 invest that into our police department. And then the rest, I'd like to have it saved. So we have something for the future because I have a business and that's what I do is I always save my money. I put some aside for the future. So we have something um, to lean back on in harder times. Thank you. Very few would remain at the podium, please, because now it is time for closing statements. Each of you will have one minute to complete a closing statement. Mary, this is your opportunity to go first in the rotation. So your closing comments, one minute, if you please. Thank you. Um, in conclusion, my main concern is safety for our citizens and their property. Um, and I may I remind you, I'm the only candidate endorsed by the sheriff. Next, I've lived here for 55 years, and this is the most the city has been divided over growth. We need careful and considerate planning. I have a history to see where, I've, where we've been, and I'm very concerned about where we're going. But my heart is, con is very invested in this community, and uh, we must heal. You deserve to trust your city councilor. My name is Mary Jansen, and I ask for your vote. Remember, save the best for last. I'm number four on your ballot. Thank you. All right. Mary, thank you. Tom, your closing statement, if you will. You also have an opportunity for one minute. Your closing statement, if you will. 
Neighbors, you've heard a lot of us talk about our interest in preserving our small business community, protecting our quality of life, supporting our phenomenal law enforcement. I have policy experience over decades nationally and locally. I am a in-the-weeds data guy who wants to get his hands into the city government and look for ways that I can improve the quality of life for all of us. Lakewood is, is a beautiful place. It's a great place that stemmed in deep history and future possibilities. I want to be your voice, one of your two known voices on our Lakewood City Council, building a stronger, safer, and greener Lakewood. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Wendy, this is your opportunity. And thanks to all of you for abiding by the COVID restrictions in the studio. We've, we know it's cumbersome, but we appreciate it. Wendy, you also have one minute. Thank you. And thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. It's exciting to be able to um, share what's important to us. I'm a mom. I care a lot about this community. I'm highly invested in this community. My family is benefited, and every family in this community should have the opportunity to benefit from it likewise. And that's why I'm here today running to serve as your next city council person. I envision a Lakewood where we are able to preserve the heritage that we love, the reason that we all moved here, while still being forward thinking as we move into the future, addressing the needs, the changing needs of our community to come. From feeling safe on our streets to preserving our parks and open space, I will work hard for you to make sure that this is the city that you can rely on and the government that you can trust. I have a background in budget and finance, and I am very familiar with um, working through budgets, and I'm excited to be able to take on the task to help the city navigate, making sure that they're good stewards of their finances in the years to come. We all deserve good people in office that will listen, be objective, and think outside of the box. Thank you very much. My name is Wendy Strom, and I ask for your vote in November or October. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. And Michael, now uh, you have an opportunity for your closing comments. You also have one minute. We're not broke, folks. We're not facing economic challenges. The city's got plenty of money. You think they don't? They're about to spend $4 million on land for a maintenance facility when we already have a maintenance facility and a lot of land with it. <clears throat> That's just one of the examples of how I'm different and how I hold the city accountable for doing the right thing. I think spending $4 million on a piece of land and then coming next year, which you can bet this is coming, next election they're going to ask for a sales tax increase. There's a clear choice in this race, and it's me. So I would really appreciate your vote. You get two of them this year, and I'm at the top of the ballot, and I would appreciate getting one of those votes. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Michael. Michael Gunstan's son, Wendy Strom, Tom Keefe, and Mary Jansen. They are the Ward 5 candidates. Thanks to all of you for your participation today. Thanks to the League of Women Voters for supplying all of our timing and our question. And thanks to all of you for watching. Election Day is November 2nd. All active voters will be mailed a ballot between October 8th and October 15th. For your convenience, there will be an outside ballot drop-off box on the west side of the Civic Center, located at 480 South Allison Parkway. If you choose to mail your ballot, be sure that it's mailed early enough to ensure that it arrives by the deadline on Tuesday, November 2nd. For more drop-off box locations, as well as the nearest polling center, go online to jeffco.us slash elections. For candidate and ballot information, please consider using vote411.org, the online voter's guide. This guide provides a side-by-side -side comparison of the candidates for all of the Colorado races. Thank you for watching.